Hey, and welcome back to my house. In this video, we're gonna be wrapping up a project we started last video, replacing my 25-year-old asphalt shingles that were shot with Euro Shield shake panels. So when we're done, we're gonna end up with an awesome looking lifetime roof made out of about 400 recycled truck tires. Let's get started. We're putting our first row down on our starter strip. You can see the hook there and the hook there. So we're just trying to make sure it's actually hooked. Since we're above it, it's a little harder to tell. Uh, can you give me a little more, Ray? Yep, that's good. We've got our starter row down and it's gonna come into this valley right now. So we're gonna snap a chalk line like two and a quarter inches out of the valley to give us like a hard reference. So when we cut this panel, it doesn't like sawtooth up the valley and look gnarly. All right, I love it. Little pro tip here I learned from a roofer is to nib off these corners that are running into the valley because water could come down through here, catch the top of this and run back potentially if it's sticking all the way out to your line of all the rest of the shingles. So I'm not a roofer, but I learned that from a roofer. Ray and I are managing the cut into the valley and they're actually getting ahead of us, Ray. So well, we need to step on it. That's mostly me actually. 21 three quarter cut and so it'd be a 28 and three quarters on top. shooting all the way into the valley here. We're gonna hold about a foot out and I'm gonna add a couple extra up top to make up for that. That has to do with the fact that um, you want a really nice looking roof. So you're doing a permanent roof, Yeah. but we also have to make sure that we can control the color. Of what the kind bottom. of tires are they mainly? We're using uh, semi tires. They're having to go through the extremes of all the weight, the number of miles. So they make know. better shingles. They, they do. Hmm. Yeah. They make better tires. So Interesting. there's been a lot of shingles. trucker miles put on these before they yeah. could get made into these. Yeah. Shingles. Right now, how much air so. do we put in these? Oh, you got Cut. It. As far as our stagger goes here, it's pretty easy. They're indicated on the top of each panel where you're going to cut this little flange to. So we're on the one, two, third row. So I've got the little flange here on row three, cut quarter inch space on down the line. We are done with this face of the roof and now we're going to jump up and snap a reference line that goes across the top of where our ridge is here because it's going to be really hard otherwise to get these first little shakes on here straight if you can imagine there's no reference of what straight is so we're going to basically snap a straight line measure down and make some parallel lines to the ridge down low to get going so when we go up and over top right here we don't get misalignment because these things snap together we, we can't be like an inch off. You could, if you had regular shingles, you could kind of fudge the exposure or something, but with these, you're not gonna be able to do that. I feel like Jamie's getting ready to get serious. <laughs> three levels. What are you doing? Well, there's three levels of uh, no, know, no, accuracy. No, 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 cut. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to bring some stability to right. this. <laughs> what are All you right, doing? I just, <laughs> well, as it narrows, it's coming down into that valley. Yeah. I won't actually be able to fit my longest level oh. all the way down, but I want to use the longest level that will fit to get Are the highest. Are you going to try to level this at the roof pitch? Is that going to work? I think it will work. Really? I do. Huh. Mm -hmm. I think that'll work right there. Okay. All right, so uh, Jay, looks like I'll go right here. Quarter, that's what I said. If you've never seen these before, they're pretty cool. You can nail them on underneath where the next panel is gonna go. And then when you're done, you just bump it up and it'll slide over and it'll come off. And then you can just leave those nails. So that's a pretty neat thing. Uh, kind of helps you get up there and then you can take it apart. I can't reassemble it with one hand. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, just let me know if Jamie starts to get out of control over here with either puns, dad jokes, or leveling things. I'm starting to think you're the crazy one. We're getting along just fine. We're getting fine. <laughs> it's boring to be boring. A little okay. bit of life. You know. Oh, oh, yeah, oh. Yeah. All hey, right. I say let her talk. Like I said, <laughs> just let me know. I think she just calls you boring. Let's have a look at the back of one of these shingles. This is another reason I wanted this product is because it gets really hot in my house. It sits directly in the sun. And the way this is designed, the part that gets really hot is the surface here and it's not touching your roof on the whole surface. So you're gonna have a lot less contact of the hot part and then you're gonna have air pockets kind of as an insulating layer uh, against your roof surface. So hopefully that's gonna keep me a lot cooler. I was really concerned about how heat is affecting my cooling system. Sometimes it doesn't want to keep up. So that was another huge factor in me wanting to use this shingle versus like a metal or an asphalt shingle again. It's 5.30, we're still trucking here. We're trying to get this side done. I just want to point out that it's 5.30 and we got the CEO of the company here doing my, my valley cuts for me. <laughs> Thank you, Leslie. This is like premium welcome, service right here. I could use a gun right now though. Yeah. Oh, nail gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, uh-oh, everybody run. <laughs> uh, just a nail gun, guys. It's cool. She's doing a great job. I'm keeping an eye on her though. That's right. It is your room. Yeah. Wow. Oh, creaky knees. Ow. Oh. Is that the roof of your knees, bud? Dude, I'm telling you, I've been kneeled down with my toes bent for like an hour straight. I'm gonna get going this morning by cutting out the underlayment that's covering up our ridge right here. This is a vented ridge system. It's not a spray foam deck. So just gonna cut this out before I put our rolled vented ridge on here and then our ridge caps. If you didn't do this, your attic would get about a million degrees. There's our rolled ridge vent here. So I think I like this better than the four foot panels just because it's just one big long shot. You can get it straight all at once. Here's a little detail we did not do on the other side around the roof boot, but it's a good idea as I took a chisel and took off this lip or the hook where the boot's gonna come down and contact the roof so it's nice and smooth over that. We sort of dealt with it by cutting the back of the neck shingle off on the other side. I think this is gonna be way better. You got schmutzed. <laughs> I guess just let it dry. We got a little bit off layout. I'm not gonna say who started layout on this row. It was Eric. I'm not gonna say who it was. So I am actually covering that nail head with some sealant just to be certain that we don't have a problem. Because the joint is not supposed to fall on a nail head by design. Am I right on that? Leslie and the team are gonna head back to Canada. We really appreciate you coming down. Did you enjoy Waynesville? I, uh, I've had a great time here. Good. Definitely thanks for hosting us. It's yeah. been a lot of fun to be on your roof. Yeah. Right, go try out Sorry about little... Jason. Uh, well, she meant to say she had a time here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, I enjoyed, you know, your local breweries. And oh yeah. Good food, so. Glad to hear it. And then there was Jason. Yeah. <laughs> So in my line of work, you tend to stink. 
you sweat a lot and you can smell really bad. So I'm really excited to share with you today's video sponsor, Native. They make paraben-free and aluminum-free spray deodorant that smells amazing, keeps you feeling fresh. I've been using it and I really love it. I know my wife and coworkers really appreciate it. I really like the coconut and vanilla and the cucumber mint scents. They both have just the right amount of scent where it's not overpowering, but you do feel like you smell amazing. With the coconut vanilla, I really feel like I'm on a tropical beach all day. This native deodorant and body spray is super fast to apply. It dries really fast so it doesn't feel wet under your arms. It doesn't leave yellow stains on my clothing and it's air powered so it's not harmful for the environment, which is great. And there's tons of scents available as well on top of the two I already mentioned. There's eucalyptus and mint, lilac and white tea, sea salt and cedar, and sweet peach and nectar. Make sure to surf around a bit on Native's website. They also do amazing body washes and lotions and stick deodorants with plastic free packaging. Use my code PERKINS to save 20% on your first purchase with Native and that code works for the entire site, but just for a limited time. So make sure to stock up and save now. Thank you, Native, for sponsoring our video. Let's get back to work. We're looking at the situation here where the siding comes down to the roof deck and there was no step flashing that flipped up behind the siding when we pulled the shingles off. At this point, our shingles are thicker and won't slide under there, so we're gonna have to take a couple inches of the siding off with a grinder so that we can get the flashing up under the siding as we go up with our new shakes. To get a line here, I'm just gonna take this level and uh, just lay it on the roof deck and scribe a line across the siding. It really needs to be up about that high, believe it or not. Got a little help cleaning up. We're gonna start with our ridge cap shingles on this end instead of that end here because the prevailing winds are this way. So obviously if it was flipped like this, there'd be more of a chance of them wanting to do that number even though they are interlocking. And I've got this little point cut on here just to look pretty. And we did learn our lesson on the other side to not smash these all the way down totally flat. This is a 412. All right, I gotta do two per side. You wanna try to clean it first? Yeah, I think it, I think it will. I mean, I've, I've got it left up pretty hard there. All right, and since this is the first one, I'm gonna run some face screws and we'll just caulk over them. And that'll keep her put. It's the final morning of our project here, and I wanted to show you guys a few of the other styles that EuroShield makes. Uh, these are slate look, and it's a really convincing look. They said even in historic districts, they've been able to get these passed. They're a little thinner than the ones I have as far as the overall profile. They're not raised up as much, but it actually makes them a little tougher because it's not as hollow behind there. So I think these are rated up to like any size hail, whereas the ones I have, I think are two inch rated, two inch hail it'll withstand. Got my first piece of flashing here, and this is called step flashing because it's gonna step at each layer. As we go up with the shingles, I'm gonna put one over my starter, and I've got it cut to fit. I put it in the wrong way at first, that's what those nails are. Uh, so it's just gonna slide under the shingles a couple inches, and then down over this, so any water that gets off this shingle gets caught here before it goes into my wall. It. Also, the way we cut this back a couple inches extra is really important. Even this fiber cement stuff is not supposed to touch the roof surface because it will wick moisture in and just completely delaminate and fall apart. So keeping it up an inch at least is what I would recommend. Here's our second piece of our step flashing and you can see the next row is gonna interlock over that and water can't get in you know, between on the edge, can't go into the wall. So that's what we're looking for. That wasn't anything here to start with, believe it or not. We're trying to make it right. Oh yeah. This is one of the things that'll get you really pissed off because you're like bent down and sweating. Yeah, there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, I'm gonna keep it right above there. Tack it down high. Maybe one more there. Got my row four stagger going into right here and Jamie was calling that the Pythagorean theorem to the, uh, to the guys here. So we had to just cut the camera earlier. My dad has made me this little windscreen at the end since we had to pucker up the uh, the ridge caps a little. So we're gonna, let's uh, let's put some sealant behind the whole thing before I shoot it. All right, I'm gonna shoot one nail right there. I think one of the people from uh, Kansas left it. They might have. I'm gonna put sealant over that. There we go. That ought to keep the birds out. How'd you line up over the ridge? It was almost perfect. It wasn't perfect, I won't lie. But it worked. It worked out real nice. I actually did a little tiny relief cut up under one of the hooks. Okay. And I was told that's okay to do. Uh, and then we just nailed the one side where it should go. We were about a quarter inch down on the other side and me and Jono just kind of shoved it up in there, shot it <laughs> off. We finally got all of the regular shingles on and we're going for these ridge caps. And uh, I think this is going to make it look awesome. Really excited to be done. <laughs> We're finding out this is another one of those jobs you got a pretty tough undercarriage. This, <laughs> this ridge vent's like a thousand degrees. Yep. So every time I scoot back, it's like, woo! <laughs> so, um, we got a ways to go. We just need to get this done before it gets any hotter. All of the shingles are down. Check it out even on this back porch. Next I have to go and put in a head flashing. It's this six inch by six inch. I'm gonna cut it in under the siding and out over top of the shingles to cover all this nailed spots. And I think that'll be it. So let's do that. So I didn't have enough of this hemmed edge. This is just a cut edge to do the entire bottom and top. So I'm gonna use this was really for step flashing. Only difference is we didn't roll that edge. But that'll work here. You can't really see it anywhere. Well, if you couldn't tell from the time lapse, that was a real battle to get, get that piece of flashing in. Probably took me like 20 minutes and I'm sweating and ticked off, but it's in there. There's my piece installed. You can see it wraps that corner, get rid of that little pinhole in the corner. I'm gonna tack it down and then I'll shoot these corner boards back tight, recalk that and uh, keep moving. The last piece of flashing going in here and I am so excited to be done with this project. It turned out amazing. I'm just really glad to be able to get off of this roof. Uh, actually, the most amazing thing I think of this whole project is that it did not rain for six days straight, which is like never around here. So I'm really happy about that. Come on. Don't be tough, last piece. Oh, what is it? There we go. Okay, yes, nail it, caulk it. And we 
are done. Hey, thanks for building with us today. I hope you really enjoyed the video. I'm really glad to be done. I hope to never ever get on my roof again in my life. And I wanna say thanks again to Euroshield for helping us out with the product for this roof. If you're looking for a bomber roof that is nearly indestructible and still looks amazing, make sure to get on their website and check out what they have. We'll see you on the next one.